You know, I've been saying lately that the Holy Spirit has been so strong, the presence of God, the glory of God in on our television show and in our social media studio uh, that I used to say, Holy Spirit, you are our most welcome guest. Come in, Holy Spirit. I don't have to say that anymore because our best friend, the Holy Spirit, is here. Thank you for being here. Holy Spirit, please take over. Take over because it's beyond our pay grade, but it is your pay grade. So my guest is good friend Troy Brewer, and I've interviewed him several years now. Uh, that because he's a numbers guy, and he studies the numbers for a, the year, uh, and he especially does it from a Hebraic perspective. You know, Troy, the Jewish year that's coming up is 5783. And this, uh, before we get to the meaning, and I'll tell you what, I interviewed a Messianic Jewish rabbi who came up with a lot of the conclusions you came up with, but you have a prophetic spin on a lot of them that our people have to hear. Um, But before we get there, there was such a heart-wrenching and touching supernatural thing that happened to you. I, I, I would have to believe that this is one of the big ones in your life. Well, yes, sir. And, you know, it started off as a dream. And um, and, it, and it's about timing because in the dream, I was literally in the future and said I had just died. In my dream, I had just died. and But it wasn't sad. It wasn't terrible. In the dream, I was like, wow, I'm entering into glory. And it was the strangest thing, Said It was there was this like a post-game interview. And there was literally a host and it was a lot like this. There was lights and there was cameras and I knew that all of heaven was listening. And this wonderful angelic being began to interview me. And he said, hey, before you go off into glory, my goodness, how you fought a good fight and how the Lord was with you. And my goodness, Troy, the the favor of the father that was upon you was amazing. And I was like, oh, I know he loves me so much. And then he began to say, let's talk about the top 10 miracles um, that that I recognize. What are the ones that you recognize? And for a time in this dream, said, I was talking about miracles and I had this tremendous grace. I could remember details and all of it just glorified the Lord. And it was so good. And after some time of talking about different moves of God within my life and just the amazing heart of the Father towards me and the way that the Holy Spirit moved, He said this to me. He said, what are the top 10 miracles you missed? What are those things? And I was like, the top 10 miracles I missed. And I instantly knew in my spirit, I knew, oh, yeah, there was lots of miracles I missed. There were things that the fathers, there was the things that the father had for me that were so amazing, but I got off track or something changed in my life. I Maybe I wasn't prayerful. Maybe it wasn't my fault at all. I just missed it. And I knew what those things were. And he asked me, he said, what is the biggest miracle you think you, you missed? What is that? And I said, oh, I know exactly what that is. And he said, what? And I said, back in the year 2022, we rescued a little girl. And I would like to pause and say this, Sid, that in In real time, outside of the dream, we had just rescued this beautiful little girl. And she was nine years old, and we rescued children out of sexual slavery all over the world. And this kid was in the Amazon, and we have a rescue center there. And I had just, outside of the dream, I had just got her picture of her little face, and I was praying for her because she was nonverbal. She was so traumatized uh, from the violence that had been perpetrated upon her that she was... um, She was not well. She was not well emotionally, physically, spiritually, and she couldn't even speak any longer. So getting back to the dream, I said in my dream, back in 22, we rescued this little girl. And if I would have found a way to make it down to the Amazon when my team was there, if I would have stopped what I was doing, and if I would have found a way, I would have walked straight up to her and I would have said, I would have said, Francielli, listen to me. 
I am your Papa Troy, and I love you with all of my heart. And she would have instantly had chains breaking off of her, and she would have ran up to me, and she would have hugged me, and she would have loved me. And then I would have said to her, it's okay for you to speak. And she would have started talking. And in my dream, I said that, and I said, I hate I missed that one. And the, the angelic being that was interviewing me said, oh, that was a big one. And I said, it was a big one. And then the dream was over. This Franchella, this nine-year-old girl, was so traumatized, she was completely nonverbal? She couldn't yes, speak sir. at all? Okay. She did not speak at all. Hmm. And, she, and she really didn't have any kind of social communication skills. She was just, she would just sit and stare at the wall. She wouldn't play hmm. with other kids. Uh, she wouldn't allow anybody to touch her. And uh, it was like serious. So, yes, sir, she was in bad, bad, bad shape. And, um, and again, we had known about it and we were praying for her. But in the dream, I, the dream that I had, which was from the future, it said that had I done this in the past, which was my now, that she would be healed. And so I told my wife and my wife said, OK, well, you know what? I'll preach for you on Sunday. And I said, OK. And so I found the ticket down to the Amazon jungle and I went down to Columbia and then I found another ticket down to the Amazon. And then I got there. My team was already there and they were waiting on me. Sid, I told them about the dream that I'd had. And I said, this little girl's going to get healed. And they were excited, but they had already been around her for several days and they knew how traumatized she was. And they were like, OK. And I was like, no, no, she's going to get healed. Watch. And to make a long story short, Sid, I walked straight up to her in the midst of all these other children, and she was just sitting there. And I said, friend, I said, friend, Shell, you need to know that I'm your Papa Troy, and I love you with all, I told her, I said, I love you with all of my heart. And that little girl looked at me, and instantly the, the anointing of the Lord filled the room. Chains fell off of that little girl, and she smiled at me, and she jumped up, and she ran straight over to me, and she hugged me like she had known me her entire life. And it was just the glory of the Lord filled the room. I was hugging this little girl and I was crying and she was just, she wouldn't stop hugging me. And it, so, so much so that when I went to let go and lean up, her little feet came up off the floor. She just wouldn't let go of me. And all of the workers were amazed and everybody was clapping. And then I looked at her little face and I said, it's okay for you to start talking now. And she said, Troy. And then she started speaking in Portuguese and started, and she just became Chatty Cathy. <laughs> My entire team was blown away. And that little girl was restored in an instant, in a moment, because of a dream that I had uh, that was from the future about the past, which was my right now, and God Almighty lined it up. It was I, incredible. I, I, I'm just curious because I know the way it should be. That's, that should be normal. But it isn't normal. Let's be candid. No, it's not. Has this happened other times? Now, I don't want you to go into it, but I'm just curious. Or was this a first time? I've seen incredible miracles, but I had never seen that. Um, I had never seen instantly. Usually, said that is a process. It's a very relational process. The power of the Holy Spirit is involved. But sometimes it takes years for these children to be able to have a right mind. Uh, this little girl was instantly healed, redeemed, and saved in every way that a little girl can be. And I saw it. I saw it with my own two eyes. I, I have to believe that that uh, this little girl has got such a destiny in God to be set free like that. But there, this is a very destiny year that we're coming into. Uh, but explain just basics so people understand when they hear what's going to happen this year. I explain the difference between the Jewish year uh, and, and the Greco-Roman year. Thank you, Sid. I'd be so happy to do that. Well, number one, God loves to speak through calendars, and he loves for us to partner with him in timing. He does specific things at specific times. You know, the Bible says God at different times actually speaks in different ways, right? God who at sundry times and in diverse manners, it says. 
And so there is, there are, there's a couple of different calendars that you and I operate by. And one, of course, is the Gregorian calendar. And we recognize that in the Western world. And that is a sun calendar. And it's based upon the, it's based upon the sun. And then the other one, of course, is the Hebrew calendar. And the Hebrew calendar is a calendar that is based upon the moon. It, in fact, is a lunar calendar. And so they're pretty different. Uh, one of the differences is that on a Gregorian day, it begins at sunup. And, and on a Hebrew calendar, it begins at sundown. And so they're, they're literally that different. But they're both very important, Sid, whenever it comes to prophetic things, because because we know that when God speaks through the sun, he is speaking to the nations. And when God speaks through the moon, whenever the Lord uses the moon as a prophetic marker, he likes to speak to his covenant people, and w- which is Israel, and that's also the church. And then whenever God likes to speak through, uh, through the prophetic marker of, say, the stars, that has to do with his, in- with his children of inheritance. That's why he told Abraham when he was talking to him about his children of inheritance, he said, I want you to look at the stars. So we know that there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and also in the stars. And it's very important for us to know what God is speaking at specific times so that we can live what I like to call an Issacharian lifestyle. And the Bible says, and let's see, where is that? It was in First Chronicles. It says that the sons of Issachar had an anointing, a prophetic anointing upon their life to where they knew the times and the seasons and they knew what Israel ought to do. It is in fact a blessing if we walk with God in his timing of things, and it is also a curse if we do not walk with God in his timing of things. The scripture says that whenever the whenever Jesus was talking about Jerusalem, he says, Jerusalem, you've missed your day of visitation. And I've wanted so much to put to move you into a place of blessing, but I could not because you did not recognize the times and the seasons um, in Deuteronomy 28, it says, it says that in the morning, if you don't walk with God in the morning, you'll say, I wish it was evening. And in the evening, you will say, I wish it was morning. So if we walk with God, we have to learn how to walk with him in his timing. And calendars can actually line us up with that. Uh, the, the Jewish year 5783. I'd like you to break down the numbers. What do they mean to us? Well, the number five is a number that represents grace to overcome. It's, you know, grace is God-given ability to overcome something. It's one of the, the definitions, the context that the number five is used in. And that's why David picked up five smooth stones. There's so many fives. There's five ingredients of the anointing oil. Uh, Sid, did you know that whenever, whenever Joshua marched out um, following Moses out of, the, uh, out of Egypt in the promised land, he ranked them in fives? No, a lot I of people actually missed that. that. He no. wanted the number five on that event. Hmm. So, so the first number means a God-given ability. And, and friends, I want to just say to everybody, and Sid, I want to say this to you, my friend. There's a grace for the day that we live in. This is a hard day, but there's a grace that God has for us in this day. The second number, 57, seven is a number that represents the manifest spirit of the Lord. It represents it represents spiritual perfection in the sense of when God wants to make himself manifest, he likes to use the number seven. And seven is the most prolific number in the word of God. There's more sevens than there are anything else, especially in the book of Revelation. And then we come from the 57 into the 83. Eight is a number that represents new beginnings. Three represents perfect completion, or what I like to say, the whole enchilada, you know, outer court, inner court, most holy place, uh, past, present, future, all of that, right? So the three things, the sun and the moon and the stars. And if we are to look at the 83, which is the big, that's the big part of the number, the 5783 Mm -hmm. on the Hebrew calendar that we're looking at. 83 is very interesting for a couple of different reasons. Number one, we are in the decade of the pay. These are the 80s and pay, or or I should just say the number 80 or the letter that represents it in the Hebrew language is a decade of the mouth or the declaration. The things that we say matter more now than ever, ever, ever before. How we line up our mouth with the word of God matters right now more than ever before. And it also has to do with with prophetic declaring words coming to pass. It has to do with that. And then there is the three that is part of that. God Almighty wants to complete and finish some things right now. One of the things that 
that people are hearing God say all over the world is get your affairs in order and finish well. That he's saying, you need to get things in order. You need to get things in order. You need to get things in order. God Almighty is telling the church to get in order. He's telling me to get in order. He's telling all of us and say, all these things that are out of order, they need to come into a focus. And the number three is when you can see all three stages, if you will, you know, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold that God's like, I want to bring some things to full fruition. And I need you to finish some things. But in order to finish well in a bunch of things, which is going to be happening this year tremendously, where God's like, I'm going to finish some things. But I but but the spirit of the Lord is saying we desperately need to be people that are willing to put things in order. And it begins with Christ is the head. That's where it begins. Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, is he is the head of all things. And if we don't get that one thing in order, the rest of it um, doesn't matter. So. You used a word in my notes I have here. You called it the Valley of Decision Year. What do you mean by that? In in all of my time of seeking the Lord, and I, I have been seeking God for a prophetic word for the year to come since uh, 1986. So I've been doing this for a long time. I have never seen a time like this right now where God is saying, there are some tests that you need to pass right now and make the right decisions in. There's a grace that God has given us, said, to make the right decisions, but he's not going to let us ride the fence. And he's not going to let us just be carried away with something. He's saying, no, no, you, there is a huge responsibility upon the people of God to make the right decisions, to stand with God in an unprecedented way, to actually... in. There, there are all kinds of opportunities. There are good opportunities, bad opportunities, but not every good opportunity is a God opportunity for you. And so that has to do with our assignments. It has to do with our purposes. It has to do with our identity. And we have to know who we are. We need to know who the Father is to us and who we are to the Father. And we need to make solid decisions as leaders and say, no, I will not live like that. Yes, I will live like this. It is a tremendous year of God looking to see what decisions will you make? What are you going to do with the choices that has been given to you? If you have 700 channels on your te on your television, what are you going to watch? If you have 10,000 thoughts, what are you going to think? This is a tremendous year where the spirit of the Lord is causing us to draw a line and to make it and make a huge decision. Uh, you know, it reminds me, I had a prophetic dream as a brand new Jewish believer. So we're talking about 50 years ago. But I thought about it as when, when I was thinking about this interview, Troy. And in this dream, I too was in heaven. And in heaven, it was, they didn't call it this, but I call it this, Academy Rewards Night not awards, rewards night. And right. I'm sitting, and I'm, of course, I'm a brand new believer at the time, and I am full of myself. I'm not <laughs> bragging, but I'm just being honest. I am full of myself. They made a big deal out of me as a Jewish believer back then, and I hadn't even read the New Testament. I'm speaking all over the world. Uh, and, and, and you know, in Academy Rewards the Awards Night, they uh, have the, uh, the envelope and the drum roll, and they tear open the envelope to see who the winner is. And I am positive that it's me, right, <laughs> in this dream. Right. And they said the name, and it wasn't me. And they pointed to a woman right in front of me. And this was an old woman that, uh, uh, an old mother intercessor type of woman. And I'm thinking, why would they pick her and rather than me? Look, I'm speaking all over the place. And I, I didn't know the value of intercessors back then, by the way. And this is what I was, was whispering in my ear. This is where I was headed. That could have been you. And then I woke up and wow. I said, God, I don't want to miss it. Wow. And this is what exactly what you're saying. This is the year of the valley of decision. And those that are viewing us right now, Troy, 
I pray that you not miss your destiny. And yes. as a matter of fact, this is this is a uh, I feel a real need right now. There are people watching us that have made Jesus Savior, and praise God for that. But they've never made Jesus Lord, and that's the decision that God is giving us the grace for that you're prophesying. This is the time to make Jesus your Savior and your Lord. And, 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 and I have to tell you, the key word here is surrender. And it's not easy for us humans to surrender. But I'm going to do my best. And I, God's given me the grace and, and uh, all of us that are viewing the grace and I want to pray that grace come upon you. But would you say, everyone that is viewing right now this prayer out loud, either reaffirm your faith or cross over that line to make it real, to make it experiential. And I'm reminded, Troy, of the, uh, the ten lepers. Mm -hmm. Leprosy is a type of sin. Yes, and sir. Can you imagine? See, the, the difference is the lepers knew they had the leprosy. Their skin was on the outside. The sins are on the inside. And no one else knows you're in sin, but God knows that you're in sin. Repeat this prayer out loud with me and mean it to the best of your ability. This is your year of decision. This is your valley of decision. Say out loud, dear God, I've made many mistakes for which I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away my mistakes. And because of your grace, I am forgiven and all of my mistakes are forgotten and I'm clean. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you Lord over me. Lord over every area of my life. Give me the grace to walk out my destiny. Amen. Well, tell me, tell me about the connection between 5783. I found this fascinating. I don't know how you know all this stuff, Troy. The <laughs> connection between the year, the Jewish year, 5783, and the signs in the heavens. Amen, my brother. Well, sir, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just now remembering this, Sid. Two years ago, on Rosh Hashanah, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, and the word went out on Rosh Hashanah that Roe v. Wade was going to be overturned. And I was with, I was doing a prophetic conference, and the word went out in the house, and we were just shouting, <laughs> Roe v. Wade will be overturned. And then this year, we saw it. it. It actually happened, and it happened at a time when it was very impossible for it to happen. It was totally impossible uh, because the proponents of abortion in our nation were actually in charge of the Senate. They were in charge of the Congress. They were also in charge of the current administration. It's like it can't happen. It did happen. And on the day that it happened, Sid, there was a planetary parade was taking place on the day that it happened this year. And it was like, OK, it was during a month here where we were having all these parades all over the place. And then the heavens gave a parade and then Roe v. Wade was overturned. That happened this year in the month of June. And just exactly like that, just like that, man, what the spirit of the Lord is doing this year is so incredible with with what's happening in the heavens, because if you look at 5783, the 83rd constellation out of the 88 that are recognized is Ursa Major. Now we call Ursa Major the Big Dipper. That's what we call it. And the job of Ursa Major is it's the seven stars 
And we know that in the book of Revelation chapter two, he says, I'm the one that holds the seven stars in my hand. Ursa Major is the seven stars, and it points to Polaris, which represents the throne of Jesus, the hmm. North Star. And it's the one that all the other stars circle, Sid. And we know that we know that everything circles the throne saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is yet to come. I think that there is an evangelical anointing to point to Jesus during the dark times and the good times of the year to come. And I think that the heavens actually declare that because of the 83rd constellation out of the 88 is the seven stars. And you know, the Bible even mentions it in Job chapter nine, verse nine, he says, he talks about the bear, that's Ursa Major, Orion and Pleiades and the chambers of the South. In Job 38, he says, can you bring the Maseroth in its season or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? The great bear's job in the heaven, which is the Big Dipper, is to point people to Jesus. It's the seven churches. It's the seven stars. Our job is to point people to Jesus this year. And all that has to do with the number 83. Well, to me, that, that what that's saying is, first of all, it, it's saying the great bear. That jumped out at me. Mm -hmm. That's Russia. I yes. can picture a great revival going. I mean, the Russians are as many of them are as broken as the Ukrainians that this is going on, this war. It's a horrific war where a whole country is being destroyed before our very eyes. And yes, I believe that this is going to be a breaking moment, that there is Let going to be a great revival going on and there I and and I, I i know you've heard the prophecies that many great men and women of god have had throughout the years that we're coming into a harvest season like the world has never seen before yes i hear that in what you're yes. teaching that it's oh, going to be a I harvest agree. time like never before i have a friend of mine that just came back from he's 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 actually ukrainian and we do a big work in ukraine and he just came back from Ukraine. Uh, his whole world has been devastated. He was actually he was actually kidnapped and held hostage by the Russians for a long time. And he saw a revival among his kidnappers. He saw he saw them give their hearts to King Jesus. He saw those soldiers actually say, "We don't even know we don't even know what makes sense in this world anymore. Our world doesn't make sense." And the glory of God showed up, and he reached those people for Jesus. So when you see the great bear is the 83rd, it's the 83rd constellation. And by the way, the pointer star is 83 light years away. Hmm. <laughs> and again, we're in fifth, just a reminder, we're in 5783. 83. That's why he's That's tying exactly that right. in. That's right. And so, no, let there be a tremendous revival and let the people of God, let the voice of let the voice of God be so amazing among God's people that we can point clearly to King Jesus and let there be revival this year in Jesus' name. I'll I, I tell you what, this is so jam-packed with truth. But the greatest truth that I've been proclaiming from the rooftops, if you will, is the greatest glory, presence, goodness of God is coming to earth. That's probably tied in with that grace because I think it's starting, it's actually started this year, but it's going to keep growing in, in this coming year is what I'm hearing you say. Yes, sir. You know, and again, it has to do with the decisions and, and, and again, get, getting back to that, to actually be consecrated to the Lord. So, so the path to holiness has to do with consecration and sanctification. Consecration is a determination to say, I will, I, I'm going to, I'm going to hear God speak. I'm going to speak the word of God. I'm going to read the word of God. I'm going to hear the word of God. I'm going to do those things. And I'm going to live a kingdom lifestyle. Sanctification is when you're just, when you, when you say this thing only belongs to the Lord, we need to decide that we only belong to the Lord. And then holiness is when the habitation of the Lord resides in it. So this is a tremendous time and a tremendous season of that, Sid. And I want to just encourage everybody and just say this, that the decisions that we make this year will greatly affect how we are rewarded or how we're messed up in the year to follow. And there's a grace on us for this. 
And uh, I can't get away with it. I can't shout it enough. And I'm so grateful to be able to share it with you today. Thank you, Sid. And that is a great last word, but I have, I have to remind you, take advantage of the grace that is here. This is your time to break free and surrender all to God. And what you can't, his grace is sufficient. Watch him move in your life. Be blessed. May the glory of God overtake you in Jesus' name. Amen.